So where we stand now, there is the new Pact on Migration and Asylum signed in September 2020, aiming to address all aspects of immigration and asylum policy in an integrated way, combining responsibility and solidarity between member states. This pact recognizes that the internal and external aspects of migration are interlinked and will strive for a more resilient, more humane and efficient Im immigration and asylum system, which will also support confidence in the second area of free movement. The pact is based on three pillars. First, a strong external dimension with countries of origin, origin and transit. Second, more effective management of external borders. Third, stricter and fair, fairer rules for solidarity within the EU. What the new Pact on Migration and Asylum, of Asylum tackles is border control, the EU database, the asylum procedures, the asylum responsibility, the crisis management, and others, mild legal actions. Unfortunately, the disparity within the EU creates obstacles to the implementation of a common migration and asylum policy. As Florian Trauner points out, uncommonly high numbers of refugees triggered by the wars in nearby re regions in combination with tight budgetary constraints of some member states have exposed the deficiency of the EU asylum policy, such as the lack of comparability of the asylum standards of certain member states. Although efforts are made on the institutional level, there are still many shortcomings and problematic areas that render the, rel the relevant initiatives ineffectual or partially effective. And there is no more obvious example regarding the coordination deficit and efficiency of the European immigration policy than the refugee crisis itself, with Greece and Italy as the main countries of entry. In essence, the refugee crisis revealed the lack of governance at the European level, as well as the deep and entrenched asymmetries, the enormous lack of coordination, and ultimately the European Union's weakness to manage the state of play within the so-called European neighborhood that is the, in the region of its vital interests. It is quite indicative of the above mentioned that the European Union has initially decided to apply a policy regarding the allocation of the refugees across the European countries on the basis of the number of their citizens and the opportunities available in each country, the so-called allocation clause. Soon, however, this agreement became inactive due to the reactions of several member states. The reactions from parts of society and the political sphere were particularly strong in several member states. Stereotypes emerged again that left their tangible imprint on the European public sphere and influenced policy planning and implementation. Significant parts of the population appeared to react as they considered, or more precisely, as they were convinced that the settlement of the refugees requires an enormous financial expenditure. At this point, it is necessary to note that the refugee crisis occurred at a time of economic precariousness and instability, while the recession and mainly its social impact were and are still visible. The uncertainties created by the wider social cost of the crisis have prompted far right with a clear anti-migration agenda political forces to instr instrumentalize fears, concerns, and insecurities. 